So please, I'm recording. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. So please mute your microphone, Peter. Okay, sir. Okay, so we will explain to you what budgeting is and also try to link it with the management cycle. And very soon we'll try and discuss why the activities of management are cyclical in nature. Then we'll discuss the objectives of budgeting. We'll also look at the master budget and the process of building up a master budget. And we'll look at it from the perspective of, of a manufacturing organization, a retail organization, and a service-oriented organization. Then if we have time, we'll discuss briefly uh, budgetary control and also consider the behavioral aspects of budgeting. Now, is your one we're discussing budgeting, the starting point is planning, because the basis of uh, budgeting is planning. And that the budget is a plan that has been translated in financial and non-financial terms. So uh, the starting point would be to understand what a plan is. In your own minds, what, what is planning? What is planning? I'm expecting a response from the class. Yes, any, any ideas? What is planning? Yes, maybe. Yes, Prof, good morning. Um, Peter, uh, planning is making provision for future occurrences. So making provision for future occurrences. So yes. what, what it's saying is that budget relates to the future. All right, yes, very good. Yes, Francis. Yes, Francis. Okay, Kevin. Yes, sir. Budget is a financial document used to project future income and expenses. Okay, so it's a financial document used to project income. Future income. Future income and, and expenses. expenses. Okay, so we're still looking at it that it is relating to the future, except that a budget may not necessarily be financial or wholly financial, and that there could be non financial aspects too. Yes, Steven. Yeah, sir. Good morning, Prof. Good morning, sir. It is a process, uh, it is a process of creating a financial plan. Uh, in order to know the entities outflows and inflows of cash. Remember what we are asking you to explain to us is planning, not budget. Okay, okay, okay. I was thinking it's budget. Okay. No. Okay, then as uh, so in my view, planning is the process of uh, thinking about the activities required to achieve a desired goal. Okay, so activities to achieve a desired goal, very good. So you're saying that if you are going to plan, you must have goals. Yes. Okay, great. Any others? Talata. Talata. Say, good morning, I just joined. I didn't get a question, say. Okay, sorry. Anne. So planning involves the setting of objectives to meet um, a required goal or a set goal. Okay, so you, we need goals or we need objectives. All right. Now let's look at um, this. An author described uh, planning as the design of a desired future and of effective ways of bringing it about. The design of a desired future and of effective ways of bringing it about. So as we have been talking about or our colleagues have been mentioning, planning relates to the future. 
Okay. And if you talk about the desired future, then you are talking about what is it that you want to achieve? And of effective ways of bringing it about. It means that it's a process and it involves um, using resources, using people, or talking about timeliness and stuff like that. Okay. Let's look at another one and see if this will capture what you consider to be uh, planning. And this author says that planning is deciding in advance what to do, how to do it, when to do it, and who should do it. Does this capture your impression of what um, planning is about? Yes, it does. Yes. So, okay, yes. Yes, which, it of does. Them, which of them will you uh, recommend? The second. From the second one. The second the first one. one. And you prefer the first one. And Benson prefer the second one. The second. The first one. I prefer the, the first, first one. one. I prefer the second. Do you prepare the second one? Yes, yes. I think the first one is in the second one, so I'll choose the second one. Who is, who is making a comment? I, I can't see it. No. When? Hmm. Now, which secondary school did you attend? Holy child. <laughs> so you prefer the second one? Yes. Yes, yes. bro. So I prefer the first one. Charlotte, say. Where, where secondary school did you attend? Um, Tema Methodist. Tema Methodist. Yes. Oh, okay. This class is very contrasting. Okay. So for those of us that went to, uh, what do you call? Is it less endowed schools or something? Is that the name they they, they call it? Mushroom schools. Which one is less endowed? No, those. If you went to a, a less endowed school, you know. <laughs> eh? And if you want, went to a grade school, grade A school, too, you know. Abby? Yes. Yes. And yes. Now, uh, for, for many of us that attended the less endowed uh, schools, usually our language is talent. So there's no big English. So we prefer deciding in advance what to do, how to do it, when to do it, and who should do it. But those who went to um, mm. those uh, bourgeois schools, their language is usually good. So they will prefer the design of a desired future and of effective ways of bringing it about. So let's see <laughs> those who went to less endowed schools and whether they prefer the second one. And let's see those who went to the so-called best schools and whether they prefer the first one. I still prefer the first one. I mean, I still prefer the first one. I, still... I like the first one as well. So whether whether you're, uh, you went to a school like mine, you still Which... <laughs> prefer Which the is... first one. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I think the second one captures exactly or precisely the first one. Yes. But the, the second one is the language is clear. That's why. No, no big English. What to do, how to do it, when to do it, and who should do it. Yes, Bismarck. So from the two definitions, I will see they are all the same. Yes, I, yes. Yes, the, the language. So. yes so, so that's what we're talking about. So essentially, they were all talking about the same thing, except that the, 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 the second one does not use big English. <laughs> so, so if you went to a secondary school like mine, then that's what you, you prefer. Yes, Michael. 
Um, okay, so thank you. Um, I was thinking the second one is more is is better because uh, the first one speaks of you trying to design a desired future and effective ways of bringing about it. But sometimes planning is not all about designing, uh, you know, a pre pre, um, you know, designing ahead of yes. time. But then it also means putting plans in place to prevent a particular thing that will happen in the future from happening. So it's, it's not cutting double ways. That is why I was going for the second one. So what do you understand by effective ways? Effective ways. Thank you, sir. That's what I wanted to say. Effective ways of bringing it about. Yeah. Effective means doing everything possible to bring... Brand, to bring Brand what second is you attend? I think his issue is with the... Um, Design Frank. of a desired future. Frank, which secondary school did you attend? West Africa. Um, St. John's School, say. <laughs> West Africa. <laughs> yeah, West Africa. Is that only about the secondary school? Come again. St. John's. Please come again. John. <laughs> John. <laughs> uh, say, please. Um, with the issue of the planning, okay. Yeah. Um, I wanted to also say that planning is basically about projecting into the future and making mm -hmm. provision for it, okay, in order to achieve. A coherent strategy. Mm. That's basically how I understand it. Okay, so you are talking about projecting today. Is it is it different from the design of a desired future? Um, say so they are the same though, but um, from my <laughs> understanding. <laughs> so please, it's English. You desired future and effective is it's English. That's why I say. And so that's that's why I'm saying that this is. If, 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 if you went to the like mine, then your language will be challenged. Yeah. So if your language is challenged, you prefer a uh, very clear language. You don't want any... <laughs> and, the, and, the effective, yeah. and the effective ways of bringing it about is just what to do and how to do it and when to do it. And that's yeah. the effective ways of bringing it about. This is Priscilla, by the way. I went to university practice. You Yes, Hello. Jennifer, mushroom school. I think we should form an association. Those of us who went to uh, the less endowed schools. It, it, and, and that's the... the, the so, so, you, so, you, you definitely go the Accra way. Hello, <laughs> the sir. One. Yes. Uh, yes, not uh, someone. Sir. Yes. Uh -huh. So I think um, the two definitions are so simple. And, but I will go for the very first one because I, I think the second one only breaks the first one down. That's all. But the first one is a well-composed one that seems to tackle every angle of whatever you want to say, just in a more uh, formulated way. So I think the first one is cool. Uh, the second I one mean, what second is you attend? I attended Addis Abel College. Hey, my brother. <laughs> At this school. He, he's, he's trying to flex. <laughs> okay. okay. But, but those aside, essential when you're talking about planning, you are talking about the future. But if you are talking about the future, you must have goals. So deciding the advance is what to do. So it means you have to set goals. Okay, your desired future. It means you have to set goals. And very soon we'll be discussing goals, and the goals will be long term or short term. Yeah, yeah, if you go to some organization, they may have uh, long term, medium term, and short term. But essentially, what we are talking about is looking into the future and setting goals for yourself and looking at what is the best way of achieving. The set goals. That's what planning is about. Okay. Now, so when we have an understanding of what planning is about, then we can now look at what uh, budget is. I want you to understand that budgeting is a process. Okay. Budgeting is a process. So it has a start date and it has an end date. And it has some elements that must be achieved. For you to say that uh, the budgeting process is complete. And budgeting, as I explained to you, the basis of it is planning. 
Now, so if you are going to do a budget, the first thing is to identify your goals. And the last thing is when you have gone through the process, you communicate to parties that have roles to play in the implementation of the budget. So budgeting is a process that involves identifying, gathering, summarizing, and communicating financial and non-financial information about an organization's future activities. So remember that the budgeting is not only financial. And the, and the, the, the issues that are contained in the budget may be non-financial in nature. But largely, you may have financial aspects. So those items that can be quantified in monetary terms may be represented in financial terms. And those items that cannot be represented in financial terms, or they are better explained using other measures or using text, will be included and they will be non-financial. Okay. So I remember that it's about the future. So organizations and future activities. But essentially, what budgeting uh, uh, the process does is to identify the goals that you wish to achieve. So the identification has to do with the goals that the organization seeks to achieve. And those goals will be in the future. But when you have identified the goals, you now have to look at how to achieve those goals. And for many goals, there could be several ways of achieving them. Now, so you need to look at the possible ways of achieving them. And that's what we do by gathering. So you are looking for uh, information, you're looking for data, you're looking at the resources that are necessary to accomplish them, and everything that will enable you to achieve the goal. And remember, there could be several ways of achieving it. So once you have gathered enough, you must now do what we call data reduction. And data reduction will include a summarize. So once you summarize, once you summarize what you have done, it gives you a clear idea of what will be the, the best way of achieving. So during the, the, the summary, you also make a choice. So choice as to how to achieve the goal is made during the, the, the summary stage. And once a choice has been made, then you need to inform parties by communicating to parties that have roles to play in terms of the financial and non-financial of an organization. So that is what uh, the budgeting process is about. Essentially to identify, to gather, to summarize, and to communicate financial and non-financial information about an organization's future activities. So during the process, the, the, the management of the organization have the opportunity to look at the goals that they seek to achieve and also the resources that are needed to accomplish those goals. So they will match the, the, the goals with the, um, the resources and see whether the resources, they have the, the resources to be able to accomplish those goals. So sometimes you set goals and you look at your, you do an evaluation, look at your resources and say, no, I cannot achieve these goals because I don't have the necessary resources. So you may have to scale down your goals. So the budgeting process will afford every organization and individuals in that organization an opportunity to, 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 to match the goals of that organization or the goals that they've set for themselves and the resources necessary to accomplish them. Now, when you have gone through the process, you come up with a document that referred to as a budget. And a budget is a plan of action that focuses uh, future transactions, activities, and events in financial and non-financial terms. So the document that you see, which we see as a plan of action that will authorize you to undertake activities, will essentially contain transactions, activities, and events, which are financial and non-financial, but it's talking about the future. So that's what a budget is about. Any, any question?
Any question? Any question? Any question, comments? Okay. Now, we have mentioned that if you are planning or preparing a budget, you need to set goals, okay? And goal setting is very, very important. So every organization may set goals and the goals that they may set may be broken into long-term goals, um, medium-term goals, and short-term goals. But for purpose of our discussion, we will um, set or look at two main uh, uh, goals, long-term and short-term. But if you go to some organization, they may decide to have uh, long-term, medium-term goals and short-term goals. So those who, have, those who have been working, tell us a bit about the goals that are set. Are they long-term, medium-term, short-term, or are they um, long-term and short-term? But you don't know the, the, the goals of your organization. Do you know the goals of your organization? Yes, sir. Let's hear you. Let's hear you. Yes, Anne. So, um, for example, a school, a school, a school institution. So the goal will be, um, if, um, sorry, how do I put it? So the final year, so like um, DHST, if they are sitting exams or something. So the long term, before the exam, so the long term, uh, that's why it's just, uh, okay, so preparing your, um, your students for exams. So the long term goal will be to, to achieve good grades or good scores when children seek exams in the coming years. That's the long term goal of a school. If I if I'm understanding what the slide is saying correctly. And then the short term goal will be. Um, the intermediate exam that is teaching before the, the main exams, the main YA exams is taking. I don't know if that makes sense. Uh, yeah. Okay. Any others? Any others? Okay, so if you have looked at the past questions, we have been asking questions on these that pick an imaginary company and set, say, three goals, long term goals. So if you're not familiar with them, especially because you have not worked or a level that you have operated, they don't come into. But if you're working in an organization, you should know the goals of that organization. Yes, Jaffe. Okay, um, sir, please. I did my service with um, an insurance company, and their long term goal was to be a household name um, in the coming five to 10 years. Everybody in Ghana should um, know about them so that they can come to them for insurance. But if you are setting goals, the goals must be smart. How will you measure a household name, every Ghanaian group? How will you measure that? Um, say, for example, um, let's say a product like Omo. Sometimes um, you go to the shop and when you want to buy any detergent, just say you want to buy Omo. So if they have Omo, they are going to give you that before you can say that no, it's not Omo I want. I want a different brand. So it becomes a household name. When you talk about insurance, that's the first name you are going to um, talk about. So they are going to get more clients for the company. And you'll be able to measure that uh, this is the brand. Mm, I hear you. Any others? this? 
Okay, Israel, uh, long term goals are set by top management. And they look at what they anticipate the business to be. In say five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, and stuff like that. So it looks at distance into the future. And they may include quality projections. So for instance, if it's manufacturing, they'll be looking at that return should be 0.001%. That's the quality that they want to see in their, 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 their products. Okay. They want to look at the growth rates. Okay. They want to look at the desire market share. Don't tell you, sir. All right. I'm going to do the power. I'm going to do the power. Let's go. I'm going to do the power. So currently, you may have 5% uh, of the market share, and you are projecting that in the next and 10 years, it should have, say, 10% of you. The, the long-term goals could include you identifying people and grooming them to assume positions in the organization, and especially if the philosophy of the, the business or the company is to um, recruit from within. So they may identify people that have the potential to become CEOs, to become finance directors, to become IT specialists or a, a CTO or chief internal auditor or whatever. Now, so when they identify people, they groom them, they give them a lot of opportunities to grow. And over time, maybe 10 years from now, they may assume positions as other finance director or the CEO and stuff like that. Okay. Has anybody in the class been identified and being groomed to assume some position in the organization? Has anybody in the class, or if you know of somebody who has been identified, do you know of anybody who has been identified? Are you there? Is the class? Yes, we are here. Yes, sir, yes, we are here. Sir. We are here. Yes, sir. Do none of you or people they know have the potential for them to <laughs> please I oh, missed okay. it to do potential to do what? To assume leadership position in the organization. All oh, mm. right. You know someone. I know someone. Okay, tell us about the person. Oh, I think um, in terms of leadership, she's somebody who is assertive, um, quite goal oriented. Um, yes, and motivates the other team member. Someone I personally aspire to, to emulate. So what we're saying is that the person is identified by the organization and they are grooming them to assume position. It's not your, your traits. You can have everything, but if they don't want to identify, you don't want to identify. It. But so yes. I, I am thinking there's a trait that would allow my event to be able to, first of all, see you, to identify you. In the first place, you like streets before. Yes, your your traits. Your, your so we okay, can only okay, find okay. out the traits based on your. How are you talking about setting do. goals? Okay, you are setting long term goals. So the organization is setting long term goals, and part of the long term goal will be to identify people who can be groomed to assume positions in the organization. That, that's what we're talking about. 
So we are not talking about trades uh, uh, of people that can um, assume leadership position. No, that's not what we're talking about. Yes, Nathan. Nathan. Yoni. If you raise your hand. Um, sir, I know of someone who worked in retail. They can hear me. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Yes, Yoni. Yes, sir. I was saying that I know of someone who works in retail. She started as a shop consultant and um, management identified some potentials in her. They, they started giving um, some rules for her to play over a period of time. And over after a year, she was promoted or promoted to the role of supervisor, not based on her qualification, on the work she, she did when she was there, when she joined them. I don't know if that is part of it. Okay, so, so that could be, but you see, we are looking at bringing people to top management. So um, those who are familiar with um, Andrew Gold Ashanti, so before the, the takeover or the Andrew Gold itself, and indeed, uh, Unilever has also been doing that. They call them management trainees. So they pick people from diverse backgrounds and look at them, groom them, give them. Then eventually some people will emerge who will eventually become the top executives. So it's a deliberate effort to get people who they, they believe can uh, perform certain rules and because of the trade that they have and because of their work culture and, and all that. that. That's what we're talking about. Yes, uh, Emmanuel. Hello, sir. So I, was, I wanted to know if, so which means in that case, promotion is not um, what you are referring to. No, 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 it's not like promotion. People that have been checked for promotion and probably maybe they've been asked to, they are given certain training to be able to occupy the places, the positions they want to promote them to. It's a different situation. It's a different situation. So oh, okay. we're talking about, so you'll be in the same organization. They will sponsor somebody to go and do a program outside. Okay, okay. Maybe MB or whatever. And you'll be struggling to get a loan to, to do that. Okay. okay. Next okay, people sir. in the organization, they may do certain things and they'll get away with it. But if you do it, they will sack you because you have not been identified. So those people become special. And sometimes they will, they will have mentors in the organization that are looking at them. So you could see that you have joined an organization, you have worked for say 20 years, somebody comes and after five years, your junior, the person is made the CEO or the finance director because they identify them and groom them to assume those positions. That, that's, that's what we're talking about. So that will be part of your long-term goals. So the long-term goals could also include your profit projections and new product development and services that you wish to, 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 to add to what you're already doing. Yes, learning. Yeah, so please, what's the difference between promotion and, and identifying them? I don't get the difference. Promotion is a, a red thing that you do, okay? What we are talking about, is that you are setting goals, okay? You are setting goals to identify people that you can groom to assume top position. So it's a goal that you have set for yourself. Okay, it's a goal that the organization has set. That because of our culture and, and all that, we usually want to uh, uh, give top positions to people, that are within the organization and not, so we're talking about like internal recruitment. 
So that would be a deliberate uh, act. And that's why I'm saying that it's a goal that you have set. That if somebody is doing well and you promote them, you won't set goals that you are going to promote them. That's, that's not it. But you don't plan for promotion. Like you identify this person and you're like, okay, I see some potential in them. And after a period of monitoring and evaluation, you decide to take them to a different role. Is it still not planning? It's not still a goal set. Yes. So, so if that's what you have uh, decided on, then it's a deliberate act. It's a deliberate act. We are, we're not talking, because uh, if you're in an organization, promotions are part of the routine things that are done. Okay, promotions are part of the routine things that are done. But we are saying that you have, say, five directors, and you are saying that we should deliberately get people that we can groom to assume those positions in the next five years, the next 10 years. So for, for one position, you may identify five people. And you are, you are giving them opportunities. And over time, one of them will be emerge. And that person assumes that position. Is that OK? Yes, sir. Yeah, hello, sir. Yes. Yeah, sir. So I wanted to know uh, from my organization, I mean, um, what they normally do is like they will give uh, some number of people to go abroad to study for about five years or three years. But mm -hmm. that one is not necessarily on position. Like there is a special area, maybe like engineering aspect. You take two people to go and study in abroad. So mm -hmm. can you classify that one to as part of it? Because it's not about a leadership position, but it's just a training that the organization need and they will send yes. them. Is it, is it training or because you anticipate that you are going to have need for such uh, expertise? So let's get most, and train them. To, what I do. Hmm. Yes, Gretchen, go ahead. Yeah, yeah mostly what, what, what I know is normally the people will be working in the organization mm -hmm. and when that period comes, they will just select them. But I don't know what I may be is for leadership position. That one I have not made much inquiries about that. But they will select a group of people and do, let them go and study in abroad. That's Atomic Energy Commission. So be later on, they'll come back and impact the organization. It's like about five years program. Yes. So, so it's, it's, a, it's something that is intentional. Okay. 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 If you go to some of the well um, structured organizations, they may even ask you to go and do some internship in another organization. So for instance, you, you're being um, trained or groomed to become the finance director and you're working with say Nestle. They can have a program with say uh, PwC that you should go and work with PwC for a year. Okay. Oh. Okay. And all they are trying to do is to Shaping you that you can take up the position. That's that's what we're talking about. Okay, thank you. Yes, George. No, please. Uh, is a promotion that I wanted to also uh, submit my view on it. Uh, okay. That uh, you explained that uh, it's something which has to be to be routine within the organization, and that one to sometimes to. It is attached to your condition of service where probably after serving a particular number of years, you are promoted to your next uh, grade based on your performance at, uh, at an interview. Mm -hmm. Then I have, have an example. There was one person uh, who was sponsored to pursue a specialist program in health outside the country. Now, uh, with the intention that when he comes, uh, he will take over a top management position within the organization. So lo and behold, when the person came, the facility had already been built and he was uh, appointed as the, the medical director. So in this case, does it fit into our discussion in terms of <laughs> the long term goal? Okay. okay. And if you, if you know of 
especially entrepreneurs, when they want uh, entrepreneurs that have their uh, business well structured and they want their children to take over, the children most of the time will not start working in that organization. They will send them somewhere, maybe uh, somewhere to just have other experiences. And when they, they, they join the organization, no time, we assume, if, if you know of um, Prudential Bank, Prudential Bank recently appointed um, a managing director. That managing director is the son of one of the promoters of the bank. Okay, yes, Adam. So this individual came and in the scheme of things, he was not part of top management. But this person will be asked to go and work in, in financial control, go and work in retail, work over time. And in no time, he becomes the, the MD. Okay, so this person has been penciled to assume that position. That's the kind of thing that we're talking about. All right, now, so when we have long-term goals, the long-term goals will be broken down into short-term goals so that as you achieve the short-term goals, then you're achieving the long-term goals. So the short-term goals are usually within one year. And they are more detailed. The short-term goals are more detailed. So remember, we're talking about planning or having a long-term goal with HR issues where you identify people, groom them, and let them assume. But in the short term, if there's a vacancy, you have to recruit and fill, fill the vacancy. So that will be a short term goal, that if there's a vacancy, you fill it. Which is different from when you are grooming people to assume position in the future. Okay. So we talked about you having um, a plan or a goal to launch new products. When you have gone through the process, when it's time to launch it, then you launch the, the, pro, the, the, the products. So those are the short-term goals. And remember that the, the short-term goals must be in sync with the long-term goals. So you have to align your short-term goals with the long-term goals. So as you achieve the short-term goals, then you are achieving the long-term goals. So it's like a building block. So if the, the long-term goal is for 10 years, whatever you do within the intervening period, year one up to nine, all of them are helping to achieve the long-term goals. And by the time you get to the 10 year, you would have achieved the long-term goal. And you have done that through implementation of short-term goals. So you must always align your short-term goal with your long-term goals. Okay. Any, any question, comments? Any question, comments? Yes, Emmanuel. Yes, yeah, sir. Please, um, can you uh, throw more light on the difference between goals and mission you know companies usually have vision and mission statements so can you give me a little um elaboration on the difference between the two thank you yes yeah, charlotte yes sir please i wanted to find out in my i work in the health sector and there is this um potential we see in and one, one of the staffs, and he's been asked to go for a, a training you know, within a, a, for a period of three years to come back and then occupy that position. It's a specialist position. Now, if he comes back to occupy that position, would, uh, would that be termed as a long-term goal? Because it's within a period of three years, and not five to 10 years as stated in the slide. Oh, okay. I mentioned to you that the 
for many organizations, you can have long-term goals, medium-term goals, and short-term goals, okay? Now, so depending on the type of organization, they may have short-term goals, medium-term goals, and long-term goals. But if we talk of the long-term goals, we are talking about anything that is more than one. So if it is not, if the organization doesn't have long-term goals and um, medium-term goals and short-term goals, anything that is not short-term will become long-term. And we have been okay. specific that um, when you mention short-term goals, you are actually looking at a year or something that is immediate. So the organization may decide that we, and as we write, they said, they, 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 they want to get somebody to be the uh, medical director and they need to, so that, that is the long term or a medium term. But it cannot be, if, if, you, if you decide that we need a medical director, there's a vacancy for medical director, so you fill that vacancy, then that's a short term goal. But if you actually make a goal to get somebody by preparing them so that they will be ready to assume the position, then that's a long term. Okay, sir. Yes, Adam. Okay, good morning, sir and class. Okay, so I just have an example to cite in order to, to buttress the point you made earlier. So I guess we all know Casa Preco Company Limited. Um, the man who started Dr. Kabane J, he focused uh, mainly on producing hard liquor. Um, but his son, who is Richard, was sent abroad to study in uh, business schools and work in some companies. And he was brought back to diversify the products that a company produces. So Richard mm -hmm. isn't concerned about the alcoholic aspect. He is a brain behind the Awake Mineral Water, the Puma drinks, the Storm Energy drinks, and all the soft drinks that Casapreco is now producing. So I think that would be a perfect example of the long-term plan of maybe diversifying from a company that does alcoholic beverages solely to one that produces beverages or all sort of drinks. So now they brought about Richard and he's now running things at the company. And now Casa Preco is really producing even a lot more soft drinks than the hard liquor we know them for. Thank you. Okay. So there are two. And there, I will uh, evict you from the class if you make any noise again. So there are two issues that I see there. You see, one, the individual was identified and groomed to assume the position. The individual comes and say, okay, these are the product lines, but there must be a shift in the product lines. So it will not be overnight. The individual may say, let's give ourselves say, five years or 10 years, and that's by five years time or 10 years time, our product range will be more non-alcoholic than alcoholic. So that becomes a goal. And, and every year they are doing something that will help them to, to achieve that. Okay, somebody asked of the, the mission and the vision. Uh, who, who is that person? Imano, it's Imano. Yes, Imano. Yes, sir. What, what is your, your, your mission here? Um, so I'm not clear with the question. Okay, so you're, uh, you are in organization meeting. Yeah, okay. You are in Vision Ghana Business Room. What, what is your mission here? Uh, to achieve um, uh, my MBA. Yeah. Okay, so that is what you seek to achieve. That is a gap that you see to, to, uh, 
to fail. But if you talk about your vision, you are looking at what is the position as far as your mission is concerned. Okay. So your, your vision will be that you want to be one of the best um, students in your year group. Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right, now let's look at the rule of budgeting in the management cycle. I've explained to you or mentioned to you that what management does is cyclical in nature. So management will plan, will execute or implement, review a report. So they will plan to execute, they review a report. And the, these plan, planning, execution, review and reporting has to do with the organization's financing, investing, and operating activities. So you're planning how to raise funding for the organization's activities. You're planning how to invest those activities, those uh, finances that you have uh, raised. So the investing activities must also be planned. Then you are looking at the day-to-day -day activities, which is operating activity. So all management does is to plan, execute, review, and report. And they go back to plan, execute, review, and report. So it is more or less cyclical in nature. And budgeting is essential in any of these um, activities that are taken are taken by management, whether they are in planning, execution, review, and reporting. Now, when we look at uh, planning, budgeting is essential because they allow the management of the organization to relate their long-term goals with their short-term activities. So their long-term goals and their short-term activities are, are in sync. And when you know that the long-term, the short-term activities are related to your long-term uh, goals, it means you are going to achieve your long-term goals because whatever that you are doing has a part to play in you achieving the long-term goals. And that is very useful. Okay. So we're able to relate organization's long-term goals with its short-term activities or short-term goals. Another Benefit has to do with the issue of um, resource allocation and workloads. So during the plan, planning stage, the organization is able to distribute resources, which is commensurate with responsibilities or assignments that have been given to people. So you know that these are the series of activities that we have to be undertaking. And because you've identified the series of activities that have to be undertaken or the work rules, you now provide resources which are commensurate in achieving those work rules. Oftentimes, people say, um, they, they, they're planning for me to, to fail. And when they want to plan or when they want to set you up, what they'll do is that they'll give you a big responsibility and don't give you the resources to be able to do it. But budgeting will identify the work activities, the workloads, distribute the workloads, and provide resources that are commensurate to achieve those assignments. Do we have people here who have been given responsibilities and yet they have not been given the resources necessary to accomplish them? Or do you know of anybody in that category? There's no. There's no uh, Sir, taking into consideration, the Ghana Education Service has given responsibility to teachers to teach the children, but there are no textbooks for them. There are no textbooks for the teachers? Yeah. 
with the current curriculum that is being implemented. Mm, okay. So how will you... So, welcome back. Now, during the planning stage, we're also able to communicate responsibilities to individuals. So, people become aware of what is required of them. It is always important to let people know what is required of them. So, when people having a assigned responsibility, they ought to know. Yes, patients. I'd like to give an answer to the question. I would like to say the independent um, prosecutor's office, Martin Amidu, he was given a responsibility, but he wasn't given enough resources to um, execute those responsibilities. How do you know? According to him. <laughs> That's one side. Okay. okay. That's his side. <laughs> okay. So, 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 based on the information that is available in the public domain, then that could be one of them. Okay. So, special prosecutor with that portfolio. All right. Now, one of the things that is also done during the planning stage is the selection of performance measures. Usually people are evaluated based on performance measures that are previously agreed. And if you agree with the incumbent, how they are going to be evaluated, then it becomes an objective one. So, one of the key things that are done is to agree on the, the key performance indicators. So, this is how you are going to be evaluated. And people now will work based on how they are going to be evaluated. But if you keep on shifting the goals, then that does not inure to the benefits of the individual employee and the organization, because they know that whatever they do, it will not be appreciated. So selection of performance and measures or indicators is paramount. And that is done during the planning stage. Now, once you've agreed on the performance measures, the next is also to set in motion how people are going to be rewarded or punished. So you set the goals for uh, reward and punishment. So if the individual achieve the set targets, what will be the reward? Is there going to be a pay rise? Is there going to be a promotion? Or what is it going to happen? If the individual does not achieve, what will be the sort of punishment? Is it going to be a reprimand? Is it going to be a demotion or to be sacked? So all of it is agreed during the planning stage so that 
everybody comes aware of what is required of them. So that's what happens during the planning stage. During the execution stage or implementation stage, the budget will serve as a standard. So it becomes a reference point. And because it becomes a reference point, it will communicate expectations. People will know what is required of them. Okay, so the, the, everybody knows that, well, this is the journey. This is how we are going so to communicate expectations. Then, based on the, the, the goals that have been set, the budget may challenge and motivate employees. And especially if the goals were set bottom up. So when it comes to goal setting, it could be a combination of either top down or bottom down or whatever the organization want to do. If it's top down, then it means it's the, the top management that will set the goals. But if it's bottom up, guidelines are given to individuals or departments or and they will set the, the goals. Now, so based on the behavioral aspect of budgeting, goals that are set bottom up usually will motivate employees to achieve. Because employees will know that they set them up and they will have every motivation to achieve it. But if it is set uh, top down, then employees will usually have the reference. They say we should do it. They say we should do it. And they, you require some external motivators to motivate them to achieve them. So when budgets are prepared and during the execution stage and the goals are uh, set bottom, usual bottom up, employees get motivated and they will achieve what is contained in there. Another advantage has to do with coordination of activities. So when you prepare the budget, during the implementation stage, because you have gone through planning, you know the series of activities, you know the sequence of them, and whatever that is needed to achieve those goals. So if you know the sequence of things, you only have to now schedule things such a way that the sequence will inure to the benefit of the organization. So because there's coordination, there's also efficiency. So if your work depends on mine, then I necessarily have to work before you get the input. So if, for instance, I will work, I will need about six hours to complete my work. And I come to work at 8 a.m. Then you don't have to be at work at 8 a.m. You could come and say uh, 12 to do your eight hour shift, knowing that if you come 8 a.m. out to the time that my output is ready, you'll be idle. So that is what coordination will help us achieve. If the organization will require funding, and the funding will be needed in, say, July, you don't raise the money in January and pay interest on it from January up to July. But because we know that the money will be needed in July, you put in arrangements so that the money is raised when you need them. So we achieve coordination and there will be efficiency. If the peak period for our production is June, you don't have to stockpile from August because there are costs associated with holding inventory. Okay. So, so that's what we achieve when we we, we prepare the budgets because we're able to coordinate activities. Then if you collect when we're talking about 
uh, the budgeting process, we say that you identify and gather, and the gathering has to do with looking for the best ways of achieving uh, a goal. Now, usually when you go through the process and you do the selection, the method that you select may have some inherent problems. But because you've gone through the process and you know the inherent uh, problems, as you implement them and they start manifesting, you're able to recognize them. And because you already anticipated those problems, you have formulated a solution. And so you recognize problems and solve them during the implementation stage because you have gone through the process. <clears throat> now, once we've done the implementation, we call that as the actuals. So the budget will be the standard. Then what you have done will be the actual. Now, during the review stage, we we'll compare the budget with the actual and determine whether there are deviations. So the deviations in accounting, we call that as variance. So if you have departed from what you originally set out to do, that would be a deviation and that would be a variance. And the variance can be positive or negative. So based on the actual performance and the budget, which is the standard, you can now calculate the variance. Now, once you're able to calculate the variance, the next is to even remember that you've got agreed on the performance measures during the planning stage. So you are using the performance measures that were previously agreed to now evaluate performance. But you need to evaluate them in the context of the time, because time is an essential aspect of implementing a budget. So you need to now determine whether, you need to now determine whether you have achieved what you did within the time frame. So timeliness, know the deviations. Then you can now uh, look for ways of improving on the performance. So you create solution for continuous improvement. So it is not just determining that there are deviations, but you're looking at how do we correct said deviation? How do we ensure that they do not occur or recur in the future? So that's what is done during the review uh, stage. But in all the activities, whether it's planning, whether it's execution or reviewing, reporting is important. So reporting is not at one stage or at the last stage that you do reporting. Reporting, okay, at the planning, at the execution, and at the review stage. And essentially what reporting does is to communicate uh, feedback. To reporting, provide continuous feedback. And for many organizations, the budget templates will be used as reporting. So whether it's at the planning stage, whether it's at the execution stage, whether it's at the uh, review stage. So planning will cut across the entire spectrum of activities in the management cycle. Okay. Any, any question? Any question? Patience, is your hand up or is an old one. Sorry, it's an old okay. one. Now let. Okay. All right. Yes, Peter, can we hear you? Well, I. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, you. Good morning. About uh, the bottom-up aspect of uh, the formation of goals that will motivate uh, the workers or the employees. Uh, I was also thinking that maybe if there should be a way of meeting the employees also halfway, management meeting them halfway, and then a, a streamlining the goal. I believe the two parties will be committed to the goal and then uh, be motivated 
to achieve it. That is what I also think. If there's anything about okay, that. so you are right. So if we if we say that the goals are set bottom up, yes. You see, the impression is the impression that is created. That is the um the 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 staff or the employees or the units that have set the goals. Okay, because usually there will be guidelines, and when the guidelines are sent to the employee or the department or the units, telling them where the organization wants to get to. And they ask you to formulate the, the, the plan, their goals. If you formulate a goal that is not perceived by management as good enough, they reject it. They reject it. So eventually, you will set the goal, but it's what management likes that you have done. Okay. But you had the feeling that you set it. That is, that is what we're talking about. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, Francis. Uh, hello, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Something just came to mind. When you when a budget is drawn. Can there be an alteration to it? Um, I'm asking this because in, I think in July of 2016, the minister in charge of finance, said Tekpe, presented um, another budget. He calls it the supplementary budget. And I'm wondering what would necessitate the presentation of a supplementary budget when a main budget has long been presented? Okay, so one of the key things that is put in in the implementation of the budget is a continuous review. So it's a terminology, but it's basically has to do the issue. So if you set the goals, and on the basis of the goals, you look at the activity, the programs, and, and all that. But over time, things change. That a, a, the goals that you set are no longer tenable. You have a responsibility to do a review of them. So what it presented was basically a review. Ebenezer, mute your microphone. Ebenezer. Ebenezer. So what, what he did was basically a review. And if you go to many organizations, the review is done. Some, sometimes the review will be done on a quarterly basis or be done uh, half year. So the review is important because you don't have to wait till the end of the, the plan period to know whether you're on track or you're not on track. If you're on track, then praise a lot. But if you're on, you are not on track, you need to look at what has happened. And if the basis of the planning is no longer tenable, you need to do a review and change them. That's, that's what is there. OK. Any, any other question? Yes, Benzi. Prof, please. Is the budget review the same as the budgetary control systems? No. So you see, when we are looking at the, the review, the review is basically looking at all the things that will have to be done. Okay, all the things that will have to, and this one will be a holistic review. Okay. So we are looking at, um, the goals that have been set, we are looking at the activities that have been uh, planned. And based on that, you now look at whether the goals that we set are trivial or they are not. Okay. But when you are talking about budgetary control, so they, they are more or less safeguards. 
okay, there are safeguards. And they will occur on a regular basis. So on a regular basis, we are looking at whether there are deviations. And you may be looking at them based on item by item. But when you are looking at a review, it's a complete uh, look at the, the, the budget, but not for just one item because it's deviating. No, that's, that's not what, what. So there's some difference between uh, a regular review or a shadow review. So some people um, may say that for this budget, we should be looking at it, say, on a semi annual basis. And that's what we, we, we do. OK. All right, now let's look at uh, the objectives of budgeting. And when you prepare, Ebenezer, I will remove you from my class. Okay, now these are some of the objectives of budgeting. Number one, we say that. Um, when the basis of budgeting is planning. So budgeting will compare planning and planning has been found to be one of the key um, tools that will help an organization to achieve this. So budgets will compare planning because if you have a, a budget and there's no plan, then it means that you have more or less um, concorded figures or you have figures that have no basis. So if you're looking at um, budgets that will, will work and help you achieve the organizational goals, there is the one that has a plan behind it. Okay. We have also mentioned that um, when we plan and we prepare the budget, as we implement, we're able to coordinate organizational activities. We just discussed that. Can somebody explain to us what that is? Yes. We said that budget will help coordination of organizational activities. Yes, patience. Yeah, um, from what I understand, we um coordinating organizational activities with budgeting. Um, we are able to know where resources are going and who carries out what activity and what should be done at a particular time and period. Okay. Yes, Anne. I was about to say exactly what she said. Okay, yes, Frank. So please, basically, it helps in the smooth allocation of the company's resources at their disposal. Okay, great. Patience, is your hand still up or is the old one? The old one, sorry. Okay. Now, another objective of budget is we're able to communicate organizational objectives and policies. Usually, when people are employed, they may tell them or orient them as far as the organizational objectives and policies are concerned. But if you're working in an organization, your knowledge and use of the policies and also helping to achieve the organizational objectives is paramount. So 
if the, the organization can have an opportunity of reinforcing what they stand for in their policies, it becomes necessary. So one of the objectives of budgeting is that during the, the planning stage or the preparation of the, the, the budgets, the guidelines that are sent will include organizational objectives and policies. So people are, or employees are constantly reminded of what the organization stand uh, for and what they seek to achieve. So people knowing the organizational uh, uh, objectives and the policies would work towards achieving the organizational uh, objectives and also work within uh, uh, the policies uh, that has been set. So if you know that the, your organization does not uh, permit the use of child labor, during the, the, the planning stage or the, the guidelines, they will reinforce that we do not, we avoid using uh, child labor. Otherwise, you get an uh, a manager who, because they want to increase profits, they will employ uh, children or use child labor and therefore save a lot of costs and make more profits. But they will not have achieved the organizational objectives within the policy framework. So it is important to know the organizational objectives and policies. And this is communicated to employees during the guidelines or when guidelines are being set. So that's another objective of budget. We can also talk about budget controlling behavior and activities. So um, when people know their responsibilities and what is required of them, the budgets may be used to control their behavior and activities. So for instance, if you, if you know that the organization says your account receivable should be a certain percentage of your current assets and it's been set. As you go on with your, your business or implementing the budget, if at any point in time you determine that the account receivable is way of the prescribed uh, uh, ratio, then what you do is to either cease selling on credit immediately or you start chasing um, people that are owing the organization. So the, 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 the budget will now be controlling your, your behavior and activities. We also have talked about performance evaluation and we said that during the planning stage, you set the performance measures and during the review stage, you will now evaluate the performance and that because the performance measures are and previously agreed, then they become very objective. So that, that is one of the key objectives of a budget. We can also talk about uh, motivating employees. And we spoke about when it comes to goal setting, and especially if it is a, a bottom up approach, it can motivate employees. And here we are looking at where the motivation is self. So we're talking about self-motivation instead of getting people to or getting using some other measures to motivate you. This will be set. This will be self-motivation because you are involved in the, the goal setting. Finally, we can also say that the budget authorizes action. So once you've gone through the process, the approval process, and finally the budget has been approved, then it forms the basis of activities that are undertaken within the organization. So typically, if you go to many organizations and you want to undertake an activity, they will ask you, is it in the budget? It means if it's in the budget, you can go ahead and do it. But if it is not in the budget, then you need to go through the approval process to, to, to get a, a seek approval before you can implement it. So we see that the budget authorizes action. Okay, any question? Any question? Now let's look at the master budget. And remember, we said that we're looking at it from the perspective of a manufacturing, a retail, and a service-oriented organization. What we need to understand is that the master budget is a consolidated budget, or it is 
um, a budget that have pieced together all the, the various budgets and they contain information that may be financial or non-financial over a period. But typically, the, the master budget, which we're saying that is a consolidated budget or it's a consolidation of all the information, will include the operating budgets. So remember that when it gets to the operating, there are budgets. So there are a number of budgets that will come together that will refer to as operating budgets. And the many, the major difference between the, the, the institutions that we talked about, whether it's a manufacturing, whether it's a retail or a service, has to do with the operating budgets. So the operating budgets are influenced by the type of activities that you are engaged in. And that's why they will be different if it's a manufacturing, a retail, or a service. Apart from that, the other budgets are similar. And similar elements will be contained in them. So for instance, after going through all the activities, if you are looking at the state of affairs, which we call the budgeted balance sheet or budgeted statement of financial position, it will contain the assets, the liabilities, and shareholders' equity. After undertaking all the activities that you want to do for the plan period. So that will be the budgeted balance sheet. Then we can also talk of the cash budget. The cash budget essentially will look at the cash that will come into the organization or how cash will come into the organization and how cash will be used in the organization and the timing of it. So it's looking at basically the sources of them, the timing, and the amount involved. So that will be the cash budget. They will have the capital expenditure budget that will look at expenditure or costs that will benefit not just one year, but will benefit several periods. So that is the capital expenditure budget. So remember that the capital expenditure budget for a manufacturer, retail, and a service will be similar. It will only be different in terms of the amount and the specific items, but it will relate to activities or costs that will relate to several periods. And the cash budget was the budgeted balance sheet or capital uh, system of financial position will be similar. So the only difference will be the operating budgets. So once we say that operating budget means that there are a number of them. And I've mentioned to you that it is influenced by the type of activities. So if you look at the manufacturing concern, the operating budgets will be different and will include some of these. Okay. Now, when you prepare a budget, there's something we call the principal budget uh, factor or the limiting factor. It is that activity that under uh, which will limit an organization or prevent an organization from achieving what they want to achieve. So it becomes the, the major constraint. And because it's the major constraint, then you have to now prepare the, the budget based on that constraint or what that factor will allow you to do. So that becomes the principal budget uh, factor or the limiting factor. We're talking about the major constraint. For many businesses, and especially if you're looking at manufacturing concern, the major constraint will be the total units or the, the total uh, sales. How many products can be sold? That becomes the limiting factor. But in some manufacturing, the limiting factor could be raw materials, especially when the raw material, there's, there's a limit to raw material. So if there's a limit to raw material, then it means that that is what you have to start with. But for many businesses, it is the sales. Now, so if you are thinking of the quantity that you have to sell, then you have to prepare the sales budget. So the sales budget will be in two parts. One in units or activity, then two in value. So the sales budget will be in two parts. One in activity, and the second will be in value. So the activity could be 
in units, could be in volume, could be in weight or whatever the measurement is. And once you've been able to determine that activity, you will now apply the same price to it and to give you the value. Okay, now, so once you plan the sales, it will now drive your production and your production budget must also be in two parts, one in activity, then two in value. The activity will determine the quantity that you have to produce. The activity will determine the quantity that you have to produce. So for instance, if it is units or the weight or the volume, or whatever it is, but for purpose of our discussion, we are assuming that it is in units. Now, so if you are going to determine the quantity that you have to, to produce, you must take into consideration the quantities that you want to sell and the quantity that you want to keep your closing store. So the quantities that you want to sell plus the quantities that you want to keep will give you the total requirements. Then you take away if you had quantities at the beginning, then that will give you your production requirements. So once you know your production requirements, you know that this is the quantity that I have to produce. Then you know that to produce one, what are the factors of production that you have to combine? So talking of material, talking of labor, talking of overhead. So once you know this, then you can translate them using the cost to determine your production budget in value. Now remember, once you are looking at your, your production and determining the quantity that you have to produce, it will also determine the materials pitches. So based on that, you can prepare your direct material pitches. You can also determine your labor and you can also determine your overhead. So you have to prepare budgets to cover all of them. If you want to annotate, you need permission. You can't do this stupid thing. Okay, so you have to prepare your manufacturing overhead based on your production um, requirements. Then based on it, you can now prepare your cost of goods manufactured and your selling and admin expenses. So for a typical manufacturing organization, these are the kind of things that you may, or the kind of budgets that will form part of the operating budget. Okay. Any, any question? Any question? Yes, Calvin. Yes, sir. Uh, how do I explain the manufacturing overhead? Okay, so they, they are certain expenses that are incurred. That may not be material, that may not be direct material or direct labor. So you put them together as overheads. So sometimes they, you could have materials, but they are indirect material. There could be labor, but they are indirect uh, labor. Then there could be some other expenses. Okay, so now once you have um, prepare the, the, the operating budget for a man, uh, manufacturing concern. We can look at that for a retail organization. For a retail organization, you are not involved in the production. So all you're doing is you're looking at what are the products that you want to sell, what that will be the estimated quantity, and what will be the selling price for each of them. Once you're able to um, answer these questions, then you can go ahead to prepare the operating budgets for retail. And for operating budgets, especially if the, 
the, the sales is a limiting factor. You're going to prepare the, the sales budget phase. Then the sales budget will now drive your purchases. Remember that you are not going to do production. So you are going to um, buy finished goods. So, and the quantities that you're going to buy will depend on the quantities that you can sell, the quantity that you want to keep, and the quantity that you had at the beginning. So once you repair your purchase budget, you can also go ahead and prepare your cost of goods budget, and also your selling admin expense budget. So for a typical retail, this may be some of the uh, operating budgets. Remember that there's no limit to the number of budgets that you form part of the operating budget. It depends on the type of activity that you engage in, and the type of activity will now drive the budgets that you have. For uh, a service-oriented organization, what you do is that you you provide in services, and you're depending on the expertise of your employees. So, some of the questions that you have to um, answer will be the services that you have to perform, and because you're going to perform services you need to now look at the labor requirements, how many hours you require to perform those services. And for any or for every um, service that you're rendering, it should be a combination of people with different uh, expertise. So you want people that are highly skilled or what we call directors or managers looking at staff. So you, you have to now set it on the level of expertise that you have which will now help you to perform the services. But because people have very, uh, varying uh, expertise, their charge out rates will be different. So you now have to look at the rates, the rates that are applicable to the various service uh, expertise that you have. So once you are able to settle these questions, then you can go ahead and prepare the, the um, operating budget for a service oriented organization. And it will include um, service revenue, uh, labor, service overheads, and selling and admin expenses. So service revenue, basically you're looking at the number of services that you're going to um, render. You are looking at it in terms of uh, the various expertise, their charge out rates, and based on that you can determine the service revenue. You are looking at labor, the number of labor hours that you're going to use, the expertise and how much uh, you're going to pay for these services. And if they are uh, overheads, you can also include that. Then you can also look at selling and admin expenses. And on the basis of that, you can um, prepare your uh, operating budget for. Okay. Now, when you, some of the guidelines that may be sent as part of the preparation for uh, preparing the budget will include issues about how to improve on the quality of the budgets. And some of the things that a manager will have to address will be why the budget is being prepared. Every member of the organization involved in the preparation of the budget must understand why the budget is being prepared. So if you understand why the budget is being prepared, then the commitment and the, 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 the way you, you, you prepare it will, will, will be commensurate with the knowledge that you have or the benefits that you're going to get with the budget when prepared. You must also know who is going to read and use the budget. If you have a fair idea of who is going to read and use the budget, then you be careful as to the content, the use of jargons and, and all that. So sometimes people prepare budgets and they are not useful to others because many people will not understand the content because there are certain words or jargons that have been used that are peculiar to maybe a session of the organization. So you need to, to, to know. Presentation of information is very, very important. How information in the budget is, is presented because the budget should be said that everybody can easily read it. And if you're looking for information, it should be easy to find. 
So these are some of the things that you need to, to, to be aware of when you're preparing the bindings. Okay. Any, any question? Any question? Any question? All right. Yes, Matilda. Good morning, sir. Uh, please, I would like to find out when it comes to uh, communication of the budget in an organizational setting. Um, should it be known only to the management, like top management, or all the staff in the organization are supposed to know their budget? Thank you. Okay, it's everybody that have, has a role to play must know. Okay, everybody that has a role to play. So sometimes, depending on your role, you may not have access to the entire budget. You may be giving the portion that relates to you. Okay. But for many uh, businesses, because they want to, they want employees to know what the contribution of their work to the entire work, they may want to give it out to everybody. But for many uh, businesses, they will just look at what role you have to play and give you the portion that you All right, thank you, sir. Okay. Any other question, comment? Yes, George. Uh, look, uh, sometimes uh, when it comes to budget preparation, uh, in some organization, the interest of uh, key managers is very low, and even some departmental heads. And the reason they give is that uh, normally this is something we've been doing over almost every year, and at the end of it all, the, we don't implement the activities in the, the budget. So in this case, as a manager, how do you bring on board this, or how do you uh, promote an uh, interest of uh, uh, people who matter in the budget so that they'll be committed? Because I have experience and uh, it's something that I wanted to bring it out to see if there could be a way, because we prepare the budget every year, but at the end of it all, they will tell you there are no funds or resources to implement the activities in the budget. So in this case, what do you do, please? Well, usually um, some organizations prepare budgets only to fulfill the requirements that they have a budget, but they have no interest of achieving or implementing the budgets. If that's the case, then it's a waste of everybody's time. Okay, so if you prepare the budget, then you are ready to implement it. So that's what I was saying. Thank you, though. All right, have a good day. Bye bye. So we will discuss the, the continuing assessment part. I have a meeting, so I cannot discuss with you now. Bye-bye. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you.